Yeah, upon closer inspection, that table wasn't as nice as it was as I was driving by it at about 30 miles an hour. Um, I was going to talk more about uh, the sanctifying work of the Spirit that we believe in the truth according to Scripture. You think about how Paul said, I am confident of this very thing, that he that began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. That he that began a good work in you. Now, what is that good work? What is that good work? What do you, what do you free will people think about when you hear that verse, that he that began a good work? Do you think about works of the law? Your performance? What do you think about when it says he began the good work, that he started it, he initiated it? That's what it means. When it says he that began it, it means he's the ultimate initiator. He that began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Sounds like he's doing all of it. He that began a good work in you, it's what Jesus was saying in John 6, 28, where he says, this is the work of God that you believe in the one that he sent. So there's some action on down here. This road's normally not blocked off. We got some fire engines and stuff. I turn around. But Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe in the one that he sent. That God does a work. And again, he does that on the ones he's chosen to be saved. A sanctifying work of the Spirit, that they believe in the truth. Brothers and sisters, we're always bound to thank God for you, loved of the Lord. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, belief in the truth. God's doing a sanctifying work of the Spirit on those he's chosen to be saved, that they believe in the truth. And that's what Jesus was saying, that this is the work of God. You believe in the one that he sent. So, who's the ultimate initiator according to Jesus and Paul? Well, it's God. I'm confident of this very thing, that he that began a good work, the one who initiated, the one who began that good work in you, will also finish it. That's the other thing about it. If God ever starts the good work, he's going to finish it. He's going to complete it. That's going to be a complete and total finished work. That's because God is a worker like no other. He finishes everything he starts. He's not incompetent. Nothing gets in his way of what he's starting to do. He doesn't need anyone's cooperation, and that's the big problem that people think that, well, you know, God needs their cooperation. Well, that's totally false. For it's God who wills and works in you according to his good pleasure. It's God willing and working in people according to his good pleasure. What's he willing and working? That they believe in the one that he sent. I'm confident of this very thing, that he that began a good work in you, so God is doing a good work as he's willing and working in us, that we believe in the one that he sent. Hold on a second. Make sure I safely get out there on the road. So... It's God willing and working in people to believe in the one that he sent. He's doing the sanctifying work of the Spirit on those he's chosen to be saved. And he's going to finish that work. So if he ever starts that work in somebody, he's going to finish it. He's going to complete it. And so it's very clear that not everybody has faith. And we see that in the scripture. Not every man has faith. So when you consider that verse... Where Paul is talking to believers and see this is the thing and I noticed David Zello uh, you know had a write out on this on his post and, and I really like his stuff he's really grown in the grace and knowledge of God but he has this free will perspective that's false and, he's, and it's fostered by Greg Jackson and, and stuff but he says you know the Bible says every man has faith well I can show you scripture where it says not every man has faith <laughs> you can't make a contradiction so when that verse that Paul's saying that believers have faith, you have to understand he's talking to believers. By the grace given to me, I say to every one of you not to think highly of yourselves and you ought to think, but with sound sober judgment as God has dealt to each one of you a measure of faith, speaking to believers. God has dealt to each one of you a measure of faith. See, David was, David Zello was saying, see that was saying every single person in the world, well, if every person has faith and they're saved because by faith they have been saved. So not all men have faith, and I can take you scriptures and show you that. 
So you can't make this contradiction in the scripture and then go on to say that everybody has faith. And, uh, you know, when the Bible talks about believers having faith, it's a specific faith in Jesus Christ, the spiritual fruit of the Spirit, something that is given to us by God Himself. There's a sanctifying work of the Spirit on those He's chosen to be saved. So when you think about that conversation with uh, Jesus is having with Nicodemus, and uh, Jesus is saying, that which is of the flesh is flesh, and that which is of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said a man must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it's coming and where it's going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And then Nicodemus says, how can these things be? Jesus says, you're a teacher of Israel and you do not understand these things. And he says, you know, we speak of what we know and we testify of what we've seen, but you people do not receive and accept our testimony. And if you do not believe when I tell you earthly things, how will you believe when I tell you heavenly things? How will you believe, Nicodemus? That's the question. How are you gonna believe? Are you gonna use your free will? Is that, the, is that how you're gonna believe? A man must be born again. Jesus gives the clear-cut answer. A man must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it's coming, where it's going, so is everyone who's born of the Spirit. There's a sanctifying work of the Spirit that God is, is doing on the ones he's chosen to be saved. And that's why people believe. Because you have to be born again first before you have faith, and that's what Jesus is saying. If you don't believe when I tell you earthly things, how will you believe when I tell you heavenly things? Well, he gives us the answer. A man must be born again. So that's why it means that the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that gives life. The flesh doesn't profit anything in terms of believing and having faith. And it's amazing how if these free will people will plug anything else in as far as a value that say that, well, I have faith because of this or I believe because of this, it's good and virtuous and there's nothing wrong or evil with that until you plug in the value of God, until you say, well, it was God who did this. Well, then that's evil. That's wicked. If you're telling me God gave me the faith and that he worked belief in me and he chose me to be saved and not others, well, he's wicked, he's evil, you know. But if they plug anything else in as far as a, a value system to make all that happen, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it in their minds. And it's because, unfortunately, they're humanists and they are loving the world. Even the short time of being in this world, we're going to be with God and his family, with our family for all eternity, our eternal family. And, yeah, there'll be some of our own family members there that God chose to be saved. All by grace. Every single one of the people that will be in heaven will all be by the grace of God. 100%. Not your cooperation either. That's the thing. All that will be in heaven will be because God chose people. If God didn't choose some, there would be none. Heaven would have none. Right, Lewis? If God didn't choose some, heaven would have none. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just joining a little Sunday ride. I'm getting ready to, to head on back to the house, but I just wanted to do a part two. Enjoying this nice day. I know the winter's going to be hitting hard here soon. And I hope you guys are having a good fall. And I hope you're going to enjoy the winter coming up. And thanks for tuning in, guys, and being supportive of the things I teach over here. I just want to be accurate with the Word of God. Why do I teach what I teach? Because I want to be accurate with the Scripture. And that's why I quote the Scripture and hold tightly to what it says. And I know that it's not going to make me popular in a lot of ways. I've noticed that I've lost a lot of uh, people that would encourage me before. But... In a lot of ways, I have a tighter fellowship now and a deeper um, fellowship and friendship with people that I didn't have before all this happened. And I realized that those other people were loving me conditionally, which is not how God loves us. These people were loving me conditionally based on conditions. <laughs> 
God loves us perfectly and completely, even as he loves his son. Father, I and them, you and me, that they may be perfected in unity, and that the world may know that you sent me and have loved them even as you loved me. And we're loved without condition. And these people were loving me based on conditions, and it was based on free will doctrine, which is a false theological system. So I had to be loved based on a compromise of Scripture, and I couldn't do that. And it's not like any virtue in me. It's just that I know the Word of God is true, and and that's the one thing I just can't compromise in, in what I'm doing here on YouTube sound with what I'm saying because uh, you know I know it's gonna have some type of effect and how it all plays out I, I'm not here to tell you I'm just here to be uh, honest with the scripture I know that there's some implications I can already see it a lot of people can't even identify that they're spiritually alive because they've been told that it's just you just believe with your free will they weren't told that you're born again and that's why you believe and if they understood that, they would a lot of their condemnations and fears would be gone because they would realize that it's the work of God that they believe in the one that he sent and God's doing the work. He will finish it. And he's doing it on the ones he's chosen to be saved. So yeah, brothers and sisters, I'm always bound to give thanks to God for you. Love to the Lord from the beginning. God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the spirit and belief in the truth. So I hope you have a good day, good Good evening, wherever you are, wherever it may be, when you listen to this video. And I'm going to end it here, guys. God bless.